Let's look at the nearsight underhook, the essentials of what you will need to complete a nearsight underhook pass. Um, we're just gonna take a look at essentials, what is in that really power you with the idea and the notion behind where you need your body and what you're trying to achieve to make a very successful ending to all of the passes or a majority of the passes that we looked at with the body lock, smash passing, et cetera, et cetera. Even the leg pummeling when we come down. When we're talking about a near side underhook, we obviously near need an underhook. So we'll take a look at it from a half guard setting because it really doesn't matter whether he has a butterfly hook in, whether, whether we have a half guard, it's all the same as far as what we want out of our body and what we want from his. Um, and then we just throw in the mix that there may be butterfly guard hooks and we may have to put our butterfly or our grapevines. We, we, we took a look at that a little bit earlier. What I need is an underhook. Okay? I need an underhook on this near side. And typically we hold the shoulder. If you have a gi, you can hold the collar right in the back of the neck. That's even a better grip. It's a little bit deeper. What I typically don't do, unless you have the, the, the arm length for it, is try to get to this far trap. Um, because what will happen is you'll lose the ability to flare your elbow. If you have just, you know, I'm, I'm a regular size guy. If, you don't, if you're very, very long, you may be able to get there and still flare your elbow. But when you hold the AC joint, you will definitely be able to flare your elbow. And so that's, that's a very important key concept to this arm. What it does is it flares the elbow. Secondly, I need my head on the ground. And, uh, and when we put our head on the ground, I put my head wide to my free side or to my trap leg side, but wide to my free arm side. And what that does is it really solidifies the second most important part of, of this pass. You've got a near side underhook and then shoulder and head position kind of combine for the second most uh, important part. My shoulder needs to be under the chin, not on top of the chin, under the chin and on the neck, basically right on the center of the neck or the trachea, potentially even slightly a little bit to that side, but not, that's not our goal. Our, our goal is to make sure it's under the chin and at least on the center of the neck. If I have my head far to my left, I'll achieve this. If I have my head ear to ear, we'll end up being shallow where my shoulder is not on the correct side of the neck. So we put our shoulder or our head wide to my left and this lets my shoulder go directly under the chin and into the center of the trachea. So now I have an AC joint grip with a flared arm. I have my shoulder position and under the chin and right on the center of the trachea and I have head position wide, wide, wide to my left. The final thing we want is I want Lance's legs facing that direction, away from his strong side. I want him facing the direction that I am passing. If I, if I put his knees to face that way, it'll be very difficult for him to hold me in a half guard or a butterfly guard because the butterfly guard now will be uh, ex extended that direction, which is very weak. And his half guard, will, will, both knees will be facing away from where he wants to be, which will allow my knee line to come through the legs relatively easy and set up our mount. So we have an AC joint grip. The near side underhook, the shoulder position in the trachea, the head wide, and I want to walk his legs over towards my left. And then when we finally hit this, and in this case, my right leg is out and free because we're in half guard, my hip is facing his. When we get to this scenario, this far underhook, is, doesn't, it really plays very little role in, in the passing at all. So we've got him pinned. We've got the ability to now use a free posted hand to shove the legs down and begin our passing campaign. And his legs will be relatively weak. His underhook is gonna be incredibly weak because of how far our weight is over on this side of the body. And it starts letting us do things like mounting and leg pummeling and, and killing off uh, the butterfly guard. So we need these three things, essentially four, if you count head position and shoulder position separate. We need these tools to make a near side underhook what it is. And it is an exceptionally strong and versatile situation that I really want you to master. It will, it will completely change your passing game. And as we've seen today, uh, the, the butterfly guard passing, the smash pa passing can all end in near side under scenarios. So when you start to, to master the near side underhook scenario, you're gonna start recovering well. You're gonna start passing better. You're gonna start to give your training partner less tools to use on you 
and and it's going to make your 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 game a, a lot a lot more fun, I believe. So, um, just essential tools, the nearsight underhook, help you with this passing. Uh, I hope that that really, really sets home.